Hi everyone. This video is going to be about determining whether arguments are inductive in, or deductive, um, and then also uh, if they are inductive to explain the type of argument. So number one, uh, because triangle A is congruent with triangle B, and triangle A is isosceles, it follows that triangle B is isosceles. This is a mathematical deductive argument, and it is it attempts to prove its con conclusion 100% um, necessarily. And we know that if two things are exactly identical, um, and one of them has a certain attribute, that being that it's isosceles, then the other one of necessity must have that same attribute. Uh, and th so this would be valid. This is a valid inference too from geometry. Um, number two, the plaque on the Leaning Tower of Pisa says that Galileo performed experiments there with falling objects. It must be the case that Galileo did indeed perform those experiments there. So they're trying to fool you on this one by saying it must be the case. They're acting as if it follows necessarily that, but it doesn't follow necessarily that. It follows probabilistically. And so this is actually an inductive argument from signs. And there's actually a sign in this one. Sometimes the, sign aren't, the signs aren't the, that clear, but there's a plaque on the Leaning Tower of Pisa that says that Galileo did experiments. Um, there are other things that indicate that he did those experiments there. So it's a pretty strong um, inductive argument, but it doesn't of necessity. We can imagine that somebody um, fudged the historical account over time and that actually what we believe didn't actually occur and we don't have any videos of it happening or anything. Um, and so uh, this is a probabilistic inductive argument. Number three, uh, the rainfall in Seattle has been more than 15 inches every year for the past 30 years. Therefore, the rainfall next year will probably be more than 15 inches. So that word probably there um, means that we're not trying to uh, prove this conclusively or beyond a shadow of a doubt or, um, or that the, the conclusion follows necessarily. Instead, it follows probabilistically. So in this case, this is an inductive argument. Um, it's, a, again, a strong one. Um, uh, but that being said, it's, it, it doesn't have to happen. So it could be the case that next year is a crazy year, and for some reason, Seattle goes through a drought or something like that, um, and then it wouldn't have 15 inches of rain, which would mean that there's a true premise and a false conclusion. Uh, and so... <clears throat> um, you can't have that in, in a valid deductive form. Uh, so anyway, the um, this is an inductive argument, and it's a prediction. We're predicting here. Uh, no email messages are eloquent creations. Some love letters are eloquent, eloquent creations. Therefore, some letters love letters are not email messages. Ugh, messed that one up, sorry. <laughs> um, this is a deductive argument. This is called a categorical syllogism, and we'll learn more about these in the future uh, in this course. Um, but a categorical syllogism, just for future reference, is uh, an argument formed with two premises and a conclusion, and they have a very specific form, a categorical form. And so uh, this is a categorical syllogism, and it's actually valid. We'll find out later what validity means. Um, in deduction, validity means true premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion. It doesn't mean uh, the way that we typically use valid when we say like, ah, oh, your point is valid. Number five, Amico, Exxon, and Texaco are all listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It must be the case that all major American oil companies are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Again, they're trying to fool you um, by saying it must be the case. They're trying to make you feel like um, that there's a 100% guarantee or that it's attempting to fully prove the conclusion or necessarily prove the conclusion or the relationship between premises and conclusion. But it's not the case. This is a generalization. It's more than likely true. I'm not sure of all the other major Amer American oil companies, but those listed here are multi-billion dollar companies traded on the New York Stock Exchange. <clears throat> and so one can imagine, um, you know, there aren't a lot of startups in the oil industry, at least maybe not that I know of, there probably are, but probably for things like, uh, for smaller aspects of this, like 
uh, creating synthetic petroleum products or something, not for like going out and digging wells and things like that. Um, it is a, again, uh, an inductive generalization. It's probably pretty strong. It is strong. Um, but it, there could be the case that um, there might be a huge oil company that's still private, privately owned. I don't know, because I don't know much about oil companies. Uh, number six, the longer a, a pendulum is, the longer it takes to swing. Therefore, when the pendulum, pendulum of a clock is lengthened, the clock slows down. There's some ambiguity here. Like, what does it mean for a clock to slow down? Um, even, even so, though, this is actually a deductive argument. Uh, it is ambiguous um, because um, if you take the pendulum and start it from a position that's out further, um, it'll take longer, obviously, to swing through and come back to its resting point. So anyway, um, the but it is this is a, a deductive argument, um, and you could test it and find out if it's true. And then if it if it is true. Um, then uh, if it's true in all instances, then we would know that it's a valid form. And I believe it is a valid form. Again, I don't know much about physics, um, but it all hinges on what do you mean by clock slows down? Time doesn't slow down. What is time? Time is duration. It's not, not really quantifiable, even though we've, anyway, dot, dot, dot. Number seven, paying off terrorists in exchange for hostages is not a wise policy since such action will only lead them to take more hostages in the future. Uh, this is uh, an inductive argument. It is a causal inference argument. Um, it doesn't necessarily follow that if we pay off uh, terrorists that they will take more hostages in the future it's probably likely that that is the case, but it doesn't of necessity follow from the premises. Um, and it's also a, a causal uh, inference because we're saying that because if you do this, then it will cause something else to happen, which in, all, in pretty much all cases, when you're making um, comments about causality, um, well, not in all cases, but in a case like this, we don't know what the outcome will be of necessity and so it's an inductive inference. Uh, the Matterhorn is higher than Mount Whitney, and Mount Whitney is higher than Mount Rainier. The obvious conclusion is that the Matterhorn is higher than Mount Rainier. This is a deductive argument. Um, I'm not sure if it's true. Uh, I don't think it's true. I don't think the Matterhorn is taller than Mount Rainier. But even though it's not true, um, it, it still has a deductive form. So you can still have a deductive argument that has false premises and a false conclusion. Um, but this is a valid form, even though it has false premises and conclusion. We won't get into that now, but we'll talk about that later. Number nine, uh, although both front and rear doors were found open after the burglary, there were pry marks around the lock on the rear door and deposits of mud near the threshold. It must be the case that the thief entered through the rear door and left through the front. This is inductive. This is inductive. Um, there's some causality here mixed in with um, uh, signs as well. Not physical signs, but like the pry marks um, and the deposits of mud near the threshold. But it doesn't of necessity mean that the thief entered through the rear door and left through the front. Um, so, Maybe the thief tried to pry the rear door open, couldn't get it open, but then walked around the front and it was unlocked, let's say, and then they were able to get in that way. Um, so it doesn't prove its conclusion necessarily 100% in all cases. There are alternative uh, explanations here, so it's, it's inductive. Um, let's see. The Wall Street Journal has an article on the new banking regulations. The Financial Times, like the Wall Street Journal, is a highly respected business publication. Therefore, the Financial Times probably also has an article on the new banking regulations. So we see, the, again, the word probably. We should, when we see probably, we should be thinking inductive, inductive, inductive. Um, this is an argument from analogy. 
So we are analogizing, we are saying this is like that. You can see the word like here. Um, and so uh, in an argument from analogy, they tend to be inductive arguments. Uh, and so we're saying the Wall Street Journal is like this, the Financial Times is like the Wall Street Journal. And so therefore the Financial Times probably has the same type of thing going on. So argument from analogy, inductive. Number 11, cholesterol is endogenous with humans. Therefore it is manufactured inside the human body. Here you would need to know um, what endogenous means, uh, which just means uh, that it's manufactured or that it's manufactured inside the human body or that it's, it's created out of our internal uh, nature. If you wanna use the term nature, I like to use that term. Um, so uh, all you have to do is look up the term endogenous and then you can verify this. So this is a deductive argument um, and it is a definition. So um, a bachelor is an unmarried male. Um, therefore, because Justin is a bachelor, Justin is an unmarried male would be, again, another example um, of an argument from definition. Uh, number 12, either classical culture originated in Greece or it originated in Egypt. Classical culture did not originate in Egypt. Therefore, classical culture originated in Greece. We'll end with this one. This is a deductive argument. It's called a disjunctive syllogism. So you'll see we have A or B, but it's not the case that B, therefore, it must be A. This is a valid form of deductive argument called disjunct disjunctive syllogism. And again, when, once we get to syllogistic logic and things like that, we'll talk more about that in the future. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Keep working on these problems. Keep expanding your mind and thinking.